let's say you have a string. Let's call it S equals A, B, C, D, E. And you want to know, does this string S start with the letter A? So the standard way that most Python developers I know would do this is S of 0 equals equals A. And that's checking, hey, is the first element, the item at index 0 in S, equal equal to A? And the answer is, yeah. What if I want to find out, though, if S begins with A, B, with that? Well, I could say something like S dot find A, B equals equals 0. Right, and that would be true. I could also use index, of course, instead of find. But this is already getting a little weird and a little hard to deal with. So there's actually a special method to deal with this, and it's called, big surprise, s starts with. And if I say starts with a, b, I can give it any string I want. Basically, I haven't checked, but I wouldn't be surprised if starts with is actually implemented as a sort of index a, b equals equals zero. So we're checking, does the string start with this? Now you can put as many characters as you want. So you could say s starts with. Right, just A, or S starts with A, B, C, and that'll all work just fine. What if I say S starts with empty string? Actually, that's true too. It did find the empty string at the beginning of the string, sort of, right? Like we don't see it, but it's there, I guess. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, now we can do the same thing at the end with ends with, S dot ends with. And I can say here E, or S ends with D, E. And that works pretty great also. Now, I personally prefer to use starts with and ends with rather than looking at, you know, s of 0 equals equals a or s of minus 1 equals equals e. I just find the starts with and ends with easier to understand, more readable, more obvious. But there is another great advantage to starts with and ends with. So if I do a help on stir starts with, you're going to see that, yes, it takes a prefix here. All right. Um, and then it'll say start and end. All right. So you can basically say, I want to check, does this substring start and end with it? That's very similar to some of the other methods we've seen before. It gives you sort of a mini slice there. But, but here's the cool thing that you can do as well. The first thing that you check there. So let's say I want to do S starts with. And I want to say, well, it's okay if this string starts with either A or Y. So I can say here, tuple A Y. That's right. That argument that we're passing to it can be a tuple rather than a string. And then basically it'll check each of them. It's like an or. Do we want this or this or this? And that's true. S ends with, and I can say here, does it end with, make sure a tuple, X or Y or Z or E. And yeah, that's true. And so sometimes people ask me if they need to use regular expressions in Python. And certainly regular expressions are great and powerful and useful and all that other good stuff. Um, but often you can get away with just using starts with or ends with. I'll just add one last thing, which is I often use these when I'm going through a file. So if I say here for one line in open Etsy password, I say here print one line, I'll say end equals empty string because I don't want it to go down one more line. So here it's showing the Etsy password on my computer. So far, so good. But what if I don't want these comment lines? So I can say here, if one line zero not equal to hash mark, then print it out. But again, I don't like doing this sort of thing. So instead, I can say, if not one line starts with hash mark. And now it gives me exactly the same result, but I think it's a little more readable.